eighth grade lesson 12.3 is finding the distance between two points. So this kind of relates um, to what you learned in the Pythagorean theorem. So you'll be able to use that idea. We'll build on it. You're going to get a new formula, uh, the distance formula to add to your toolbox that can help you find distance between two points. If it's not something that goes right along the lines on the graph, if it's going diagonally, you know it's hard to find those lines that go diagonally. This distance formula will help fix that. All right, so we have these um, this triangle here now on this graph. It shows a right triangle, so we know Pythagorean theorem can come into play. It wants us to approximate the length of the hypotenuse to the nearest tenth using a calculator. So first we would find each leg, so you would figure out what the um, base and what the height is. The right angle is here, so you would just count one, two there, and one, two, three, four here. And you would plug those into the Pythagorean theorem. A is four and B is two, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Four squared plus two squared equals C squared. Um, so this is 16, this is four, and 16 plus four is 20. And then we, in order to isolate the variable to one variable C, we need to do the square root of c squared, same to the other side of the equation, and we find out that this length is 4.5 for its distance between. So, and you can check for reasonableness. Really, you can look and like it, it diagonally goes across 4, so you knew it was going to be somewhere around 4-ish, a little longer than that. Um, and then check for reasonableness in terms of the calculation. Remember, we did this at the beginning of the year. You have the square root of 20. What's the lowest perfect square next to it? And the what's the perfect square that's just lower than this one and the perfect square that's just higher than this one? Perfect square just lower is square root of 16. The one just higher is square root of 25. Square root of 16 is a 4. Square root of 25 is 5. So you knew it would be between 4 and 5, and it is right in the middle at 4.5. Okay, one more example. Um, they want us to do this without a calculator. We could do it without a calculator. It's fine. Um, they want uh, us to approximate, so that's why we can use an ish number, the length of the hypotenuse, hypotenuse uh, to the nearest tenth. Now I can look at it. It's going to be four, five, four to five-ish, somewhere in there. I think more like five-ish. five -ish. Um, That would be my first approximation. But let's go ahead and get it a little bit more accurate by using the Pythagorean theorem. We have uh, one leg. The right angle's here, so this is a leg and this is a leg. One leg is one, two, three, four. And the other leg is one, two, three, four, five. This is 16. This is 25 for a total of... 42. This is the part where we would like to use a calculator just to do the square root of 42, but it's really important we practice those skills you learned at the beginning to just round them off. So we know we're going to do the square root of c squared to find out what c is. That means we're doing the square root of 42 as well. So it helps to know my perfect squares and uh, if you were in my class and you remember in the resources where I put the perfect square chart, you make you can pull that up. But I know 7 times 7 is 49. That's the one just higher. And so just lower would be 6 times 6, which is 36. So I know that this number, whatever it is, is going to be somewhere in between, um, pretty close to right in between. So I'm going to call it 6.5, in between 6 and 7. So I'm going to call it 6.5-ish. So that would be my approximate, uh, 6 and a half in length. So that practice of the Pythagorean theorem, again, learning the Pythagorean theorem, gives us a new way to find the distance between two lines on a diagonal if it is a hypotenuse of a triangle. Um, but what if it isn't? So we can use the, what if it isn't uh, on a right triangle? Find the distance between any two points. The Pythagorean theorem can use to find the distance between any two points, x1 and y1 and then x2 and y2. These ones and twos as the subscript just mean um, one point x and y and the other points x and y to find the distance between them. 
in the coordinate plane. The resulting expression is called the distance formula, and it looks complex, right? But it is just piecing together all the pieces um, that you've learned in the Pythagorean theorem in a different way so that you can just use that to find the diagonal. So in a coordinate plane, the distance between two points x1 and y1 and x2 and y2 is dis d for distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 to the second power plus y2 minus y1 to the second power. And then you would calculate that and it would give you the distance. It's something that when you work on this, I would suggest writing that at every problem that you practice this, writing the whole formula down before you plug numbers in so that you can get your brain to let that sink in. Every time you write it, it sinks in. Let's see it happen. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to derive the distance formula. They're going to show you how the Pythagorean theorem takes us into this. To find the distance between points P and Q, draw the segment PQ and label its length D. So we're going to draw between P and Q. Pretend I have a, a ruler there and could do that nice and straight. Okay, and then from here, what we're going to do is they tell us, go ahead and draw um, a horizontal and a vertical segment from each of those lines until they meet so that you have now created the right triangle. So if I had to find a line that was the length of a, a line that was diagonal, I could use what I know about right triangle and just have two, a horizontal and a vertical line from each point meet. And we see that PQ, the triangle PQR is a right triangle with hypotenuse being line PQ. All right, and so to find, um, without having to draw it or graph it, if I just had the points, to find the distance from this line, if I didn't have it here to count it, I know that it's the difference between the X on this one, which is the same as this one, and the x on this one. So I could do x2 minus x1 to find the length of this. That's where this comes from. So this would be if I didn't have it on a graph, but I knew the points, the coordinates. I would do x2 minus x1. So x2, because it's going to be the same as this one, minus x1. That will tell me the length of this. And on that same token, um, if we did y2 minus y1, this one is how far up on the y, and then both of these are the y1 the, because they go up just as far. So I could do y2 minus y1 like this to find the length of that if I didn't have a graph to count it on. And that would give me the numbers I would need in order to use that Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, again, if I have it on a graph, sure, I can just count those legs and be fine. But if I didn't have it on a graph, this is your workaround. They're showing you, well, you could just take x2 minus x1, sorry, x2 minus x1 to find the length of that, y2 minus y1 to find the length of that, and there you have it. And then you plug it in the formula and it will take you through to find the distance of the other side. So here they say use the Pythagorean theorem to find d, the length of segment PQ, PQ, and substitute the expression from B and C for A and B. So we're going to, we have the distance squared equals A squared plus B squared, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but we're just using distance now. Distance will equal the square root of A squared plus B squared, A squared plus B squared. We're going to find A by doing the subtraction here. We're going to find B by doing the subtraction there. So we have this, it, this, by the way, these points are 2, 2, and 7, 7. So for my x square, um, this one is going to be 7, 2. So my x square is going to be 7 minus 2. And then my y2 minus y1 is going to be y2 minus y1, 7 minus 2 as well calculate that, we're going to get 5 square plus 5 square, and we want the square root of that. 5 square is 25 plus 25, and we still want the square root of that. 25 plus 25 is 50. We want the square root of that. We know that the square root of 49 is 7 times 7, um, and the square root, so 8 times 8 then would be the next one, 64. 
but really close to this. I would call that 7.1-ish is the distance for this line. So we used the distance formula. It's just a version of the, the Pythagorean theorem that allows you to do all that without having to put stuff down on a graph. So let's have a look at this in action. Francesca wants to find the distance between her house on one side of the lake and the beach on the other side. She marks off a third point forming a right triangle as shown. The distance and the diagram are measured in meters. So notice we don't have things we can just count, right? So we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to find the straight line distance from Francesca's house to the beach. To find the length of the horizontal leg, we're gonna take this um, x coordinate, 280, and subtract from it this x coordinate, 280 minus 10. Then we are, and that's what they did here. Then we're going to take this y coordinate to find this length, this y coordinate, and subtract from it this y coordinate to find the length of that side. And they, they have it as absolute value. If we're looking for the difference between them, we're not worried about signs. So if it went into the negatives, we're just going to do the subtraction and get the absolute value. So the, um, the length is 144 on that. So I'll plug those into here. Okay, and then what they're doing from there is using, now that they know the lengths, they're using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared to solve. Um, a squared, 270 squared. That's what we have here, right? And b squared, 144 squared. That's what we have here. That's going to give us c squared. We just put that as d. And we know that in order to isolate c squared, we'll have to do the square root. And that's what they've already done for you on the distance formula. So it's the same concept, just helping you get those numbers if it's not readily handy and showing there. So I have um, 270 squared. They did the math for us. Thank you very much. 72,900. 144 squared, 20,736 equals c squared. And there it is on my version of the distance formula too. Then they end up adding those together. They get 93,636. And I, on my calculation, am told I'd still need to do the square root of that. Um, they're going to end up doing that because they have to isolate that C square. So square root of both. See, it really just follows that all the way through. It's just another version. And then I have the square root of 93,636, which apparently is 306. So the distance of that hypotenuse is 306. And that is meters to from her lake to the beach, from her house to the beach at the lake. Okay, let's solve this by using distance formula, which again is just a version of that Pythagorean theorem. Cam Sunshine is also on the lake. Use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between Francesca's house and Camp Sunshine to the nearest tenth of a meter. So I'm going to also put the Pythagorean theorem here so you can see them work in conjunction at, at the same time on the same thing. How do I find the length of this? I'm going to take this x, 200, minus this x, 10. And then I'm going to do the same for this y coordinate, 120 minus 20. That's going to give me the lengths of this leg and this leg. So I'll calculate that. 200 minus 10 is 190. And 120 minus 20 is 100. So if I'm using the Pythagorean theorem rather than the distance formula, I now have the length of A and the length of B. Okay, there we have that. Same idea here. I'm going to square this, square this, and then I will eventually do the square root of that sum. Uh, I'm going to square this, square this, and do the square root of that sum. So it's following the same path. It just gives you that extra step in there of how to find that distance if you don't have it on a graph. Okay. So it was um, x 
2 minus x1, right? And then y2 minus y1 is how that works out. So if you didn't even have this point, you could use that because it ends up working out that way. That distance formula walks you right through making that happen. All right, so let's get those calculations then. Okay, there's the calculations of the squares, 3, uh, 36,100 and one, uh, 10,000. Same here. Now, on the Pythagorean theorem, you would isolate that c to c out of c squared by doing the square root. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's just add those together. That is going to be 46100. Zero, zero. Now we will be doing the square root of that. Okay, and on the other side, we're doing the same, 4, 46,100 square root of. You can see where they came together to be the same thing. So ideally, they're kind of the same thing. This just helps you find the lengths of the AB without having to draw things out. And then I'll do the square root of that on a calculator. It ends up being 214.70910. I'm just going to round it. They said to the nearest tenth of a meter, so 214. Point seven is what C is, or in this case, the distance of that line of that house from Camp Sunshine, 214.7 meters away. So that's how you use that. With practice, it's not so bad. Just go ahead and punch in um, the X2 minus X1, then the Y2 minus Y1, then do the calculations. So, so I think you will do just fine on this. Just with practice, it becomes easier.